angiogram. Uh, I'm sorry, we, 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 we don't have those. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's no... Uh, <laughs> there's none? There, there were none. Okay, but the MRI you have? Um, yes, it just the, confirmed the findings of the uh, CT scan. Okay. So I think uh, most likely when I see this destructive lesion, the first on the list would be uh, uh, Clomus jugulare. Um, most likely. Clomus tympanicum, no, it's too big because it's destruction of the uh, jugular foramen and uh, some of the temporal bones. So I think it's a, a Clomus uh, jugulare tumor. And um, would you biopsy this? No, no way, no way. <laughs> I think this. I know you're a very creative surgeon. Wouldn't you biopsy? No, no, no way. Because it's a clinical diagnosis. You get an MRI and you have your diagnosis. Yeah. Professor Gleason, you look skeptical. Well, I wasn't convinced the jugular valve was eroded. Actually, I'd have thought at the age of 82, it's a rather le uh, old to present with a glomus yeah. tympanicum. But I think that's intact, yeah. isn't it? Although I mm, think no. you'd probably want coronal sections well, to be sure. Yeah. The, the, jugular, the jugular foramen. For, this is not. This is not intact. He knows. He sees a bone dissolution, bone erosion posteriorly. You can see it better in back of you because yeah. it's a larger uh, image. Well, well, I, I, um, I, I have some. Yeah. I have a little bit of doubt about that, and um, I must admit, if I had a lot of doubt, and she'd uh, and she passed the rest of my physical examination, I, I, I wouldn't be that worried about taking it a small piece of tumor out and have a look down the microscope. I think that, I don't think that would cause a, a, a panic in the blood transfusion service. No, but I think it's not going, Michael, I'm not going, I don't think it's going to change your treatment no, plan. Going to ask, what's the purpose of the biopsy? Yes. Well, what if it was metastasis or, or something else? What's the purpose of the biopsy? To see what it She's is. 82 years old. Which might be a very good 82 year old. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a metastatic malignant tumor, mm. you're not going to operate That's on correct. it. No, at least I'd know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Boots? Yeah, I think uh, we also have to consider uh, differential diagnosis. I think it's probably not a tumor. I'm not, I'm not very sure. Um, because of uh, the, the shape, and um, I, I mm. rather would uh, agree to Michael's uh, um, suggestion to a small biopsy, and uh, I think it will not end in a uh, disaster. How about we, we see what, what it is. Sure. Could it be an aneurysm? Um, no, aneurysm? No, not, no, not with this. No, 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 no that's not no. aneurysm. No, okay. no way. See, Differential right. diagnosis, of course, should include aneurysm, but not with such a CT no, scan. Also, you've got some tissue necrosis. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, what, so what do you advise this lady? <laughs> what would be your advice, Professor Shah? Uh, she's 82 years old. She's otherwise happy. She's got uh, hearing loss on the other side, uh, and she's got good facial nerve function. I would give her two choices. Do nothing or have radiotherapy. But yeah, for, for radiotherapy, we must know what it is. Well, but we might want to do radiotherapy without might knowing the no, But you can, yeah, of course. You can get uh, all the information by doing further study, which is yeah. non-invasive, without poking her, her ear. I think you can establish diagnosis, most likely, when you get an MRI, for instance. You can get an MRI, yeah. uh, an MRI angio. If, yeah, you, if it exactly. shows you a glomus tumor, yeah. you, you don't need tissue diagnosis. We made the clinical diagnosis of a glomus tumor. Mm -hmm. The patient was not interested in surgery. Mm -hmm. She's been followed now for six years. There's been no change yeah. in her yeah. um, uh, diagnosis, exactly. in her condition. and. Um, she continues, as Professor Shaw pointed out, with her yeah. quality of life uh, uninterrupted. And what you can also do in such a patient, for instance, if he has bleeding from his ear, you just take the, the bipolar under local, uh, coagulates the part which is lateral to the tympanic membrane and uh, stay out. Yeah, well, she's yeah. had no other symptom. This is the last case, uh, if you have time to get into it a little bit. The 33-year-old man with the chief complaint of pressure in the left ear, when he exercises, it uh, become, has a feeling of uh, fullness, uh, is accentuated, he has no hearing loss or tinnitus, and he has no uh, family uh, history. Uh, physical examination revealed a red mass in the middle ear, and his uh, 
cranial nerves are intact. So um, where would we go from here? Professor Boots? Yeah, well, this uh, seems to me to be a classical uh, glomus tympanicum. Or jugular. No. Yeah, no. Or jugular, yeah. mm -hmm. I would not be sure if this is a high bulb. This is the um, <laughs> this is audiogram. Well, uh, <laughs> he's tricking us. Then. CT <laughs> scan <laughs> shows uh, marked destruction of the bone and the mm. tumor. Uh, the tumor is uh, adjacent to the facial canal, and the patient has intracranial um, tumor. So here uh, are his uh, <laughs> scans. Thirty-three year, thirty-three year old man. Mm. Mm. Differential diagnosis, Professor Gleason. Well, that looks very much like a glomus jugulari tumor. I didn't see the intracranial element. I have to say, I saw the erosion of the jugular bulb, and it wasn't extending as well, it was extending up to the vertical segment of the carotid artery. So I'd get an MR scan, I'd get a, PT, uh, a PET. I'd be doing a CTA to see whether the circular bullis was intact. But that looked like a C C C two or C one tumor to me. What do you think, Wolf? I, I'm not sure. I have seen also. Um, well, uh, maybe it's 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 a, a, a rare bird. But I have seen also um, endolymphatic sac tumors, which look exactly mm. similar to this. I'm not sure. I would not go uh, to the glomus jugulari tumor without any further symptoms of the patient, if he has no uh, lower cranial nerve palsy, etc. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, this uh, patient um, uh, had a biopsy made, it was a paraganglioma, mm -hmm. and uh, given the um, scans that you saw uh, before, let's just look at them again for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, a C, it's, a C, it's a C2 tumor. Mm -hmm. How would you um, stage this uh, tumor? What um, would you use? Uh, we use the Glasgow uh, Jackson staging system. Do you have another one? That's well, you're in Europe now. Favorite? It's a fish, <laughs> one. A fish classification, yes. So we would use the fish classification. Mm -hmm. uh, I think even even in America they they, they use that now. Um, but essentially, it would be staged according to the extent of the tumor from the jugular bulb along the carotid artery towards the foramen lacerum. So if it wasn't involving the vertical segment, it would be C1. If it was involving the vertical segment, C2. If it was involving the horizontal segment as well as C3, it was going through the foramen lacerum, it would be C4. And then you'd have a D classification according to whether it was DI, intradural, or DE, extradural. And that looks like a C2 tumor to me. Mm. So what would you um, uh, offer this patient? You I'd know, do an inf he's a young chap. I'd make sure he hadn't got any other disease with a PET scan. Uh, and I'd do an infratemporal fossil resection using the infratemporal fossil A type approach, which I, which I demonstrated. And he'd have a good outcome. How would you and counsel a patient about, um, about uh, cranial nerve, um, possible cranial nerve damage? Well, he's got about a 30% chance of having a vagal palsy. He'll, almost certainly have some degree of facial weakness after transposition, yeah. which should recover to normal or near normal within six to 12 months. He'd have a glossopharyngeal lesion from the fact that that usually gets uh, transected as you uh, remove the jugular bulb from the uh, skull base. But other than that, he should be intact. And he'd have a conductive hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Professor Mon, is there any, uh, well, any would, role for non-surgical management in this case? No, I don't think so. Two points I would stress. Number one, this, would, uh, this man would get a, a um, genetic examination. Or, uh, <coughs> and if he's positive in about an hour series of um, 120 patients I've operated, about 25% had uh, genetic defects as we can diagnose this by today. Number one. Number two, I would operate him also. I would do it uh, without um, uh, rerouting the facial nerve. Um, I would use a juxta uh, condylar approach. I would not sacrifice the middle ear if I can. And uh, I think this is uh, uh, rather possible. We have modified a little the technique which was described by Fish. Uh, by this approach, which was described by uh, George from Paris, the neurosurgeon, and coming from posteriorly and um, inferiorly, 
and then picking up a technique which was described by Glasscock, just um, going directly in front of the facial nerve and not really <coughs> leaving the facial nerve in its ent entire uh, bony canal and drilling down to the internal carotid artery. Gives you good functional results and it allows you to preserve hearing. How about reconstruction? Well, I would, uh, very simple, I would use uh, free abdominal fat and um, that's it. Any role for any other uh, adjunctive uh, therapy here? No, not in, my, not in my opinion. I think, you know, for me to <coughs> operate on this patient, I want to show whether that this tumor is growing. Because many of these tumors will remain stable for many, many years. This is the first time we are seeing a 33-year-old <laughs> lad, and I don't want to give him 9, 10, possible 7 palsy. He may be a young working executive, and his life is going to be short for a period of time. His activities are going to be short for a longer period of time. And some components of his cranial nerve function will be short permanently. So I need to have a reason to uh, have a good indication to operate. So the first time I see the patient, I would say, come back and see, after I get good studies, come back and see me in six months. I'll repeat the studies. Because these tumors grow at a rate of about a millimeter a year. So they are not going to blow out of his head. If I show significant growth, then I have an indication to operate. Conversely, if his tumor remains stable for the next 10 years, I've given him 10 years of good cranial nerve function without making him morbid. Yeah, I think, uh, Jatin, your point is well made. And, um, but um, two things speak against it. Number one, uh, he's a young man. Likelihood is very high that he's going to grow. Number two, what do you do if he's radiologically not growing, but he comes back in half a year, has a, a vagus nerve palsy or glossopharyngeal nerve palsy? That's a sign of growth. You go back. Yes, but you know, they are not going to recover. Right. Yeah, that's a problem. I, I have seen these patients where we do wait and scan, and suddenly they come, bingo, uh, uh, vagus nerve. They start to become hoarse. So I don't, I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, just imaging alone gives you an indication of, um, uh, I think it should also well, imaging include... imaging and obviously the clinical... Clear, of course, neurologic, I think it's... Sure. I just Absolutely. wanted to make the point that yeah. you cannot rely no, on... No, no, not imaging. only imaging, okay. obviously. Okay. Okay. Surveillance implies course, clinical yeah. and, and imaging. Uh, this particular patient elected, uh, since this was his first uh, evaluation, to be reevaluated in... Uh, six months' time to see if there were any uh, progression of the disease, understanding uh, the um, surgery was explained to him in, uh, in great extensive detail, and uh, although he was a patient who was uh, fit and could withstand the uh, problems uh, with uh, swallowing, speaking, and so forth that might arise, uh, he uh, elected uh, to uh, wait and to, uh, to uh, stay under observation. So, um, uh, and we also uh, carried out uh, uh, genetic uh, testing uh, on this patient. He had no history himself or in his family of other people with uh, uh, possible uh, paragangliomas, but nevertheless he uh, went through uh, testing in our institution for the SCHD gene for uh, uh, PGL1 uh, syndrome was um, uh, negative. That doesn't mean it'll always be negative, but uh, uh, we uh, strongly uh, uh, suggested that all of his uh, uh, siblings and uh, children and so forth be tested for the same uh, Gene. So um, I think that our uh, time is up. I wanted to thank the panel very much for your very um, erudite uh, comments and for a uh, very um, uh, spirited discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.